This video is going to be all about color matching and matching cameras from either different brands or cameras from the exact same brand that might have slightly different color sciences. Today's video, we're going to talk about all the things that you need to actually do on set and the things you need to do in post. Now, this is going to be sponsored by Film Convert Cinematch, which is an essential tool that we're going to need to match all these colors up in the first place. And we're actually going to try to see if we can match up the Sony FX30 right up into a camera like the Sony Venice, or at least we're going to die trying. Uh, okay, we're not going to die trying, but we are going to make an attempt as best as we can. But let's just start with the video. Now, the cameras that we do have in this matchup is going to be the Sony FX30, the FX3, the FX6, 9, and the Sony Venice, as well as the Sony a7 IV. Now, all of these cameras do have S-Log3, which is incredibly handy because it is going to have the same exposure at about 41% IRE. Now, I do use LUTs on my camera, so it might be 41 to 44%. Now, you want to make sure that your exposure is going to be accurate between all of the cameras because you can't really fix everything in post up to a certain point. Now, a way that I do this is I just use Cine EI on the FX cameras on the Sony Venice, it actually has a 500 ISO, which is a little bit different. However, I'm going to make sure that no matter what camera I'm using, I'm going to expose my S-Log3 at about 41 to 44%, which should be pretty accurate amongst all of the cameras. Now, next, you're actually going to need this guy, and this is a gray card. Now, I haven't really talked about gray cards a lot on this channel as of late. However, these are essential tools that I use not only to get proper exposure, but I also use them to get white balance as well. If you have two cameras at 5600 Kelvin, they actually might look slightly cooler or warmer between each other. So what I like to do is I get a shot on each camera using my gray card in order to make sure that everything's balancing to the same object. Now, the third thing you want to do is actually making sure that you're shooting at the most flexible color profile that your camera could actually handle. Now, like I mentioned before, we're using all Sony cameras and everything has S-Log3 that's in it. So it's actually going to be pretty easy to make sure we have the utmost flexibility. However, one of these cameras have raw, so it's going to have a little bit more than the other ones do. However, if you have camera profiles that are flat or in logarithmic profiles, you might want to use that in order to make sure that you can push and pull colors to make sure everything matches. Lastly, and this is going to be more of a bonus tip, but you want to make sure that you have matching lenses or at least as best as you possibly can. Certain lenses have certain characters to them and it's a lot easier to get accurate color between an entire set of lenses rather than using different brands on different cameras. Make your life a little bit easier and if you have something like cine lenses, try to get different focal lengths or even the same focal length in the same brand and make sure that that color is accurate and consistent, especially between things like sharpness or whatever have you. However, we're just gonna move on to actually getting our log footage and then we're gonna go into Film Convert in post and we're gonna match up all these colors and see if we can get the FX30 to go all all the way through and match up to the Sony Venice. Another tip that you want to use is actually matching up your monitor. So I'm using the Atomos Ninja 5 because when I am going to use false color to expose for my IRE values, I want to make sure that they're all the same way and they all look kind of the same. So when you are going to match monitors, make sure they are around the same company or at the very least the IRE skill that they use and the colors that they use are the same, which makes life a lot easier when trying to expose for your image. Now, I did bug my friend Nicole to actually help me out with this test. So you're going to have to go and follow her on TikTok. However, this is actually going to be what all the shots look like before we jump into DaVinci Resolve and get into actually color matching these things. All right, so now we're in DaVinci Resolve and we have to set up our white balance. Now, the way that we're gonna do this, we're gonna set up a little bit of a node tree, convert into Rec 709, and then just use the gray card to grab our white balance from. Now, the first thing you're going to notice in my node tree is that there's a white balance node right over here, a blank node that I keep just for safety if I have to make any adjustments, and a CM for Cinematch that's going to be here as well. Now, because I already have Cinematch downloaded onto my DaVinci Resolve, I could just go to Effects, type in Cinematch, and then I could just drag that over into the node here. Now, this is where you're actually going to be able to use the, now this is where you're gonna be able to use the sensor match capabilities in Cinematch. Basically what it does, it actually has a list and cataloged of every single sensor, and you can actually convert these into other sensors, color sciences or their gammas to make sure that you get accurate or at least very close in terms of the dynamic range and some of the color that a sensor produces. Now, right over here, we're just gonna ingest actually have our Sony Venice that's on here. So you click your source camera profile, and then you can choose from the drop down menu, go to Sony, Obviously, I'm not using an A1, I'm using the Sony Venice, and I am shooting an S-Log S Gamut 3 dot Cine, and I'm going to press apply. Now the camera knows that I'm using that color profile that's on this camera, and then I'm just gonna go and swing down to here, right at the, right at the primary corrections. I'm gonna click apply Rec 709 
transform, and that's in Rec 709. Now, the easiest thing I have to do now is I'm just gonna go back into my white balance node right over here. I'm actually gonna go into my primaries, and right here is a little eyedropper where you can grab your white balance from. So I'm gonna click on my white balance dropper from. So I'm gonna click on my white balance dropper, and then I have a more accurate white balance based on the gray card that I have in the shot. Now, the easiest thing you wanna do over here is that you wanna copy and paste this over the other nodes that you have to grab your white balance, which you could just do by pressing shift, clicking over the nodes that you need, and then you just press command C, command V, just a normal copy and paste. Now, keep in mind, every single camera is going to interpret white balance a little bit differently. So the white balance that you use in the Sony Venice isn't going to be the same as the FX9, the FX6, or the other cameras. So what you're gonna to have to do is go back to that white balance node in order to make sure that you get it for each individual camera. So let's go and do that. So now we here have the FX9. So this obviously doesn't look the same as over here. This is a little bit more neutral because it's balanced, but if I copy and paste those settings down to here, you're going to notice that it looks a little bit different. So all I really have to do is just click that eyedropper one more time, go over to that gray card, and now it looks a lot better. This looks a little bit more consistent. Now it is going to be slightly different, but we are gonna find out that when we go to the next step of this, when we actually start color matching these things, you can make some fine adjustments to really get these two to look like the same camera. All right, so here's the moment of truth, and we're gonna to try to match the Sony FX30 to the Sony Venice using Cinematch. Now this is going to be a little bit of a process, and I'm also going to use my LUT workflow with Cinematch in order to make sure that I get the looks that I want and the looks that I'm used to, but at the same time, I'm matching two cameras that are one $1,700 versus something that's like $60,000. So let's give it a try and see if we could actually pull this off. All right, so we are in DaVinci Resolve here, and we're gonna be working on the Sony Venice as our reference clip to actually match the other cameras to it. Now, specifically for this video, you can use a lot of the same techniques between different cameras, but I am gonna match to the Sony FX30 because I did promise that I was going to do that. Now, what we're gonna do first here is I'm actually gonna go into my match node, and that's essentially where the Cinematch node is going to go. I'm gonna drag and drop it over here. You saw me do this before. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make sure that my sensor match is turned on to the Sony Venice onto itself. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this. I haven't really noticed any changes if I don't, but I do wanna do this safely because I am gonna use a Cinematch node in order for me to match up most things that are gonna be between these two clips. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my source, obviously is going to be the Sony Venice that's gonna be on here. Using S-Log3, S-Gamut 3.Cine, gonna apply and then I'm just gonna go and change that to make sure that my target is also the same thing. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I have to do the same thing on other cameras I'm gonna to match to. So uh, I just wanna make sure everything's consistent, so that's what I'm gonna do there first. Now, when we're gonna go over to our primary corrections, what I'm gonna show you is something that's actually really cool with Cinematch. Now, you can adjust the Rec. 709 or your exposure, which you can do on your own or you could use it doing another node, but one thing that I do like is that you do have the exposure false colors here. So, it actually gives you an indication as to where middle gray is going to be, and I can adjust my exposure back and forth to see and make sure that I actually have accurate levels. So, if you don't have a gray card, this actually comes in handy. Now, I'm gonna turn that overlay off, and I can even go into here again, I'm just gonna turn that back on again, but I'm also gonna go into here and you can actually judge where your skin tones are going to be as well. So you do have a skin tone overlay, which is gonna come in handy when you do need to match up skin tones between two clips. Now I'm just gonna reset both of these things over here. And uh, you could also adjust your temperature and your white balance onto here as well. So when we are talking about in our white balance node before where things might still be a little bit of a change, you still have to make a micro adjustment, you could actually do that in the Cinematch node itself. Now I am somebody that does like using LUTs with my S-Log3, so I'm just gonna go over to my LUT node over here, a step you don't necessarily have to do, but I like doing it. And I wanna see if I could color match using the LUTs that I've made myself for S-Log3 footage. Now, going back into here, you could also adjust some of your levels as well, but I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my exposure node and I'm just going to use my curves and make sure things are still under the hood. Although I am transforming to just S-Log3 on top of itself, I am gonna still do things under the hood like I would any other normal workflow, but I'm just using that Cinematch node as if it was something like a color space transform. Now, I'm gonna use my curves to actually adjust my exposure just to make sure that my blacks are clipping and my highlights aren't blown out. Now, one thing you wanna pay attention to when you are color matching 
watching is you want to pay attention to these scopes. And these are really going to come in handy later when we bring in another clip. But essentially, I just want to make sure that the bottom area here isn't actually clipping. I'm just going to make sure that there's no solid lines down here. So I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. See if I can get any more information that's going to be on here. And now the skin tones in the mids are a little bit high for me. So I'm just going to make a node or just make a point in the middle. And I'm just going to drag that down. Now, I didn't light this the best I possibly could, so in terms of the actual lighting for the shot, not the greatest, but I do wanna show you guys how to match things and I want to make this video quickly. So I'm right now just making a little bit of a couple of adjustments just to get things in the way that I want them to and just so I could use that as a reference. So this is going to be the shot of the Sony Venice and I'm gonna to try to get the FX30 to color match as best as I can. Okay, so now's the moment of truth, and we're going to try to line up the Sony FX30 to the Sony Venice. Now, when we jump back into DaVinci Resolve, we have our reference image here. Now, these are all the adjustments that are on here. However, I did forget one thing. Now, there is a node that I left for a white balance as well. And you just want to make sure that you're copying and pasting the white balance information from the first step that we did. You want to just copy and paste that node over here. And then you want to make sure that you move that over here to the corresponding camera. Just a small step, something I forgot, but I want to make sure that we keep going with everything as accurate as possible. Now, in order for us to be able to match this up, what I'm going to go over here is to my FX30 node. Now, now just as a disclaimer, this isn't the same framing. So this isn't going to be a blind test at the end for you to guess which one is which. I only had one lens and I was using the Super 35 FX30 versus that 6K open gate. It's, it's going to be framed up differently. So the point of this video is isn't to blind guess, but it is to actually match these up as best as you can. Now I'm just going to label this node to do my white balance and I'm going to take the white balance from my FX30 that I had on here, control C, and then I'm just going to go over here and make sure that I paste that and that's there. Now the big thing we want to do is go over to our match node and I'm just going to go to my Cinematch into here, drag and drop that on top. And what I want to do is make sure that my source camera is obviously going to be the Sony FX30. And then the target that we're going for is obviously going to be the Sony Venice, just to make sure everything is nice and accurate. Now, one thing I do like doing, especially when working with S-Log3 footage, is I actually made my own S-Log3 LUT. So I am going to use that as a part of this workflow and just use a Cinematch kind of the same way that I would a color space transform. You don't have to do this step. You can convert to Rec. 709 like we did for the white balance step. However, I like using my LUTs on S-Log3 footage. If you want to check them out, they're in the description down below. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and make this thing happen. I'm going to go over to my LUT over here. I'm going to click Eglinton. And that's essentially what we're going to start off with in terms of starting to color match the FX32 the Venice. Now, if you do want to see a side by side, you want to go over here where it says split screen. Now, I already selected selected clips as the option I want to do there, but you do have a bunch of different options that are here. Once I have that, I'm just going to control click. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go into my Cinematch node, go to my effects, and I have my effect controls over here. Now, we already did our sensor match, so I'm going to collapse this just so it's easier to see, but we can go to our primary corrections. Now, if you guys do want to use some of the false color features, I'm going to show you how to do that quickly before we get into the color matching. Now, if you do want to make sure that you're exposing for your middle gray or your skin tones, when you turn on your exposure false colors, when you have it selected to middle gray, what it's actually doing here is a green highlighted parts are actually where it's going to be at middle gray. And what you can do is you can change your exposure, and as you can see on the right side, you could actually change where it's going to end up and land in terms of where that exposure is going to go. So if you do want to match it up a different way without a gray card, you can use that. Now, something that is really important, I'm just going to reset this. Something that is important that I do want to do if I want to match up my skin tones is I'm actually going to go over here to that drop down menu. Instead of middle gray, I'm going to pick skin tones. And there you're going to have that red where it's going to represent those skin tones to make sure that things are matched up. Now, I do have to get at a split screen in order to do this, but if I do the same thing on the Sony Venice clip with skin tones, I got to go back and select, and it makes sure that they are pretty accurate to each other. The deeper the red and the color matching of that red is going to indicate that they're somewhere along the same line. So, so in terms of exposing my skin tones, we're actually pretty in line with each other. It's going to turn that off, but those are two features that you can use if you want to match things up a little bit better. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit over here and we have these two images beside each other. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to try to get this to match over here and right off the bat I notice that this is a lot cooler than the image beside it. So what I could actually do here in those primary corrections is I could adjust my white balance and some of those temperature corrections inside of the Cinematch node itself. So I'm just going to go over here to my temp, 
I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. I do notice that it is a little bit on the green side, so I'm going to see if I can get that to come out just a touch. And from a white balance perspective, we are pretty, pretty close together. Now, one thing you want to pay attention to is going to be your scopes. And when you want to match up some of the levels of your scopes, the closer you are going to be able to match up some of the levels in the actual image itself. One thing I like to look at is at the top ranges over here to make sure that nothing is clipping. So if I want to make sure that I bring everything down, there is a little bit of a solid line on the FX30. So just imagine there's a split line between the two. On this side of that imaginary line is the FX30. This is a Sony Venice. And right now I'm just going to make sure that we get rid of some of that over here to make sure that we're not clipping. Now, you can actually do this in the Cinematch node, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my exposure and keep things under the hood, so to speak. So I'm just going to go to my top here on my curves. I'm just going to bring that down just a little bit just so I get the information that I need, or at least pulling out some of those really bad spots. And then I'm going to go over here just because I noticed that it is a little bit darker. So I'm going to bring up those upper mids a little bit again just to see if I can get a little bit more information without actually clipping the image. And I'm going to do the same thing for the blacks. You can tell here that there isn't a solid line on the Sony Venice. It has more dynamic range. So on the Sony FX30, I might have to play a little bit more with that just to see if I can get as much information back as humanly possible. And I'm just going to go over here, play on the lower middle side of things. And then right in the middle where my midtones are, I'm just going to bring that to a level where that makes sense. Now, like, this right here looks pretty good. I've just been staring at it for a little while, and it's really hard for me to be like, if I'm seeing this in an A and B camera scenario, and the FX30 is like a side camera in an interview, it'd be really hard to tell that there are drastically different cameras. I'm just going to full screen it just so I could check things out a little bit. Now, something I do notice when I do put this onto full screen is that there's a little bit less highlight information that's going to be on the skin versus the Sony Venice. Now, this just might be a fact of the fact that the Sony Venice does have so much more dynamic range and it's a 6K sensor that's $60,000. But the Sony FX30, I'm going to see if I can actually get a little bit more out of it. But aside from that, there's not a lot I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to go over to here is maybe I'll just use the Cinematch node here. And I could actually just bring up a couple of the levels that are down into here. So you have things like your color wheels. If you guys aren't used to wheels, uh, or if you're used to your primaries, you could actually adjust a lot of those things from your lift, your gamma, and your highlights and your gain onto here. You can still do that using Cinematch. Or you could use levels if you're used to like a Photoshop workflow or anything like that. But for the most part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I could bring up things in the highlights just a little bit more. Now, I accidentally clicked that. Don't worry about that. So I'm just going to bring up my gain just like a touch more and see if I can get these to match together. Now, I am going to make a couple of really, really small adjustments just to see if I could get it as really close as humanly possible. Now, the trick is already a little bit kind of ruined because the framing is going to be the same. However, personally, in my opinion, if you actually put this in an A and a B camera situation, especially in something like an interview or a documentary, it's going to be very hard for you to tell the difference between these two cameras. Now I'm going to admit, if you stare at these two clips long enough, you are going to be able to tell some subtle differences between the Venice and the Sony FX30. However, if you're using this in a two camera setup, it's going to be very hard for the viewer to be able to distinguish which camera is going to be which. Now, that's not to say that the Sony FX30 is so good that the Venice is completely useless. The people that are Sony Venice people are going to be Sony Venice people. And there's nothing that I could say or color match in DaVinci Resolve that's going to change your mind from buying a Sony Venice and bring you all the way down to an FX30. However, what I am trying to say is that a lot of these cameras are good nowadays and they match up pretty well. Now, if you're using a camera from a different system, you could use a lot of these techniques and just change your source into the camera that you're going to be using and match up. But what I'm trying to say here is that with the camera like the Sony FX30, if you're someone that feels like you're missing something, you actually can use a smaller camera and still be able to be in scenarios and situations and sets when you're using other cameras that are going to be more expensive. And that range doesn't necessarily just go from the FX30 to like the FX3, but you could actually get this to look pretty close to the Sony Venice. 
Now, in a situation where you do have multi-cam scenarios, you can always use some of these cameras as a crash camera or a B camera in an interview or something for a utility purpose and still get the color and the image that can match up pretty well. It's not one-to-one, -one, but it does a pretty decent job. And I did use a lot of these techniques and Cinematch by Film Convert to actually match a lot of these clips together. So anything from the Sony Venice right down to the FX30 can be color matched pretty similarly to each other, and you're gonna be able to use it in a variety of different situations. Now, if you guys do wanna go and check out Cinematch for yourself, I did leave a link in the description down below. You can actually go on there, check it out, but I do highly recommend getting this, especially if you're a multi-cam shooter. That being said, a special shout out to Film Convert and Cinemash in order to let me actually make this video for you guys and give me the chance to actually try to match the Sony Venice down to a camera like the FX30. At the very least, I hope you guys at least enjoyed the video or learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.